Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Haskard, uh, the co-director of the Clean Energy Resource Teams, or CERTS, partnership as part of Extension and the Regional Sustainable Development Partnerships. CERTS is an organization that works across Minnesota to help communities who are identifying and implementing energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. And uh, something that's either interesting or very confusing about us is that the vast majority of us are Extension employees. We typically work on the U of M St. Paul campus that you can see there in the picture, although we're all now currently at home because of the COVID. Uh, so our statewide office is within Extension and the Regional Sustainable Development Partnerships. Uh, they do a ton of cool stuff on sustainability with uh, local foods and resilient communities, and we are the energy program within that. Uh, what's confusing about us is we are not entirely Extension. We are written into state statute as a partnership. So even though the vast majority of us are within U of M Extension, we work with three other partner organizations that you can see at the bottom of this slide. And this also gives you a, a chance to see sort of the main buckets of work that we do around the state. We have uh, part-time regional coordinators in the seven regions that you see there. Uh, we also have steering committees that help us uh, find and uh, focus on those locally important projects that they have identified within their own communities. Those steering committee members might be utility representatives or environmental advocates or com county commissioners or uh, energy efficiency or renewable energy technicians. They're folks that have energy somehow as a passion that they're working on. Uh, this slide gives a little bit of the background of the impact that we've had over the years. And what I'm about to do is go through a few of the programs that I hope would be useful to you and the work that you're doing in your communities. Uh, at the very end of this presentation is my email address. And I'm really hopeful that you'll see something that resonates with you. And it'll be something that maybe we can work on in the, in the days or weeks or months ahead. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is reducing the energy burden for Minnesotans. Energy burden is how much money uh, a person would be spending every month on their energy bills. Most of us are lucky to have that around three and a half percent or so, but some folks unfortunately uh, spend 20 to 30 percent of their monthly income on their energy bills. They're having to make that decision between medicine, food, energy, and uh, we're trying to help reduce those energy costs. We have a very aspirational goal, uh, a very ambitious goal is what would happen, what would it take to get every household in Minnesota to have their energy burden at 5% or below? Uh, the key mm -hmm. word is aspirational here. <laughs> um, and so I can tell you the first thing we wanna make sure that you're aware of is energy assistance. This is a program through the Department of Energy. It's a federal program. It's had some more recent influx of dollars. You and so as you can see from the left, it's based on eligibility income, uh, how much income you have. And then from there, we want you to sign up for energy assistance. This can not only help you pay for your current energy bills, but something important for you to know is this can help pay for bills that are in arrears or past due bills. So beyond that, it then puts you in the line and in the queue for weatherization. And that's when a crew comes out to the home and actually installs insulation, air sealing. They might be uh, repairing or replacing a boiler. So we want as many people as possible in Minnesota to take advantage of this vital program, this crucial program, and make sure if they can to get those energy assistance dollars. How are we doing so far? Um, these numbers are from 2017, before COVID, before the pandemic. But basically, you can see we had about 500,000 uh, Minnesota households eligible for energy assistance. Of those, 133,000 participated. And of those, only 1,700 were uh, weatherized. So we've got a long ways to go. It'd take about 291 years to get everybody done at this rate. Um, so how can we do this? Uh, what are some of the ways that we can help people reduce their energy burden. Here you see a weatherization crew about to start work in a home. Uh, one of the resources that we've just recently created, and we really hope that you will find it useful, are these home energy guides. These are 
created for landlords, renters, uh, homeowners of single family homes and manufactured homes or trailer homes. Uh, these are tips and guides on how to keep those homes comfortable, safe and energy efficient. Uh, they are available in English and Spanish and you can customize them for your organization. I don't know if you can see from this slide, but in the bottom right corner, we're showing you examples of four organizations who have customized these for their own. It's free. Um, we don't have the ability to print hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands, but we can certainly get these to you with, they can be customized. It's, it's pretty darn easy. My email at the end of this presentation, let me know if you have any questions about this. Um, We've got about 20 some electric utilities using them now just in the last couple of weeks when this rolled out about the 1st of April in 2021. Uh, we've got about 10 nonprofit and city organizations using them. We'd love to have your organization use them as well. A different subject that we wanna talk about now, I'm, I'm moving away from the under five energy campaign is working with farmers and landowners who are looking for ways to reduce energy costs. A lot of calls coming into us about solar. And here on the far right in the green sweater and the sunglasses is Fritz Eminger. He does the, mass, the vast majority of our, of our work in this area. Uh, what he can do is let farmers and landowners learn kind of the pros and cons. He's gonna be talking to them first. If they're calling about solar, he's always gonna be talking to them first about energy efficiency. If, you know, their motors and their lighting and things like that might be the first place they want to look to reduce their energy costs. But you can also help them with the USDA Rural Energy for America program or REAP grants. This is a 25% grant for a renewable energy project. The MDA Livestock Investment Grant, he can talk about other depreciation and uh, maybe some utility uh, incentives that are available. He's a fantastic resource. He can work one-on-one -on -one with farmers and landowners with questions about these things. I highly recommend if you've got anybody asking you questions about this to, to send them my way and I'll probably send them Fritz's way. <laughs> um, he can also talk to them and refer them to Property Assessed Clean Energy or PACE funding. Um, this is a fantastic program that helps people finance an energy efficiency or renewable energy project and then repay it as a separate item on their property tax. This map shows the counties that already have this in place. Those are the green counties. If you see a county there that's uh, not green and you'd like to learn more about how to get this implemented, please, please let me know. We've got somebody who can come talk one-on-one -on -one and give a presentation about what PACE is and how it works in the county level. Those blue and yellow dots are projects that have happened uh, using PACE funding. And we, each of those dots on our website, you can click on them and learn what the project was, how much money they used, uh, what they're using it for. It's a fantastic resource. Finally, for those county commissioners who might be hearing and listening to this, we have this guide avail uh, available. And again, this would probably be Fritz you're working with, but it can give you a better sense of uh, the challenges and opportunities when solar developers are coming to your county and saying, you know, we're, we're interested in working with you. We probably have some great resources for you here that can help you kind of best plan your next steps. So we, we ask you if you're interested, take advantage of this. Moving on, I want to talk to you another, another thing that uh, gives me a lot of emails and phone calls are schools. They're teachers, superintendents, principals, maybe even a student group saying, hey, we want to put solar on our school. Uh, we want to learn more. And so we provide a lot of information about uh, challenges and opportunities there, how to best do this, what to look for, um, and we would really encourage them to give us a holler. Uh, we've been tracking, I hope this map is pretty, pretty up to date. We've been tracking the school districts that have solar in some capacity there on site. So you can see on this map, the, the sort of red is uh, on site solar in a school district. The yellow is they are participating in a community solar garden and the orange is if they're doing both. Uh, we would love to see this map filled in. If, By the way, if you see a school district on there and you're saying, hey, we've got solar on one of our public K through 12 schools, uh, send me an email, we'll get her on the map. Uh, something we will have available this summer of uh, 2021 are seed grants. Each of those seven regions has $20,000 available and those local steering committee members that I described earlier will vote on these proposals that come in for a community energy efficiency or renewable energy project. This is to cover labor costs. 
And these are really seed grants. Uh, they're typically around four or $5,000. Each region has $20,000 to spend, but we hope that sometimes that little amount of money can help get a project going at that local library or community center uh, to uh, you know, get that project finished up. And so we'd encourage you, if you can think of an organization that would like a CERT C grant to keep us in mind, uh, it's gonna come out summer of this year. We also keep an updated energy job board. Uh, so a lot of times this has 15 to 20, sometimes even 30 job opportunities across the state. And I think my last slide here is that we are also trying to track all the different resources for people who are looking for a career in clean energy. Uh, as you probably realize, we, we could use a lot more electricians, we could use a lot more people in the workforce uh, getting these jobs and uh, we're doing our best we can to get people to the right training center all across the state to find those opportunities. Here's, here's me. Uh, my phone is uh, in my office in the St. Paul uh, gathering dust and I do kind of a lousy job of checking my messages. So I hardly encourage you just to email me. Uh, and that's the quickest way to get a hold of me. I hope within this presentation, you found one or two resources that might be useful for you or if you get a call from a farmer or a school person or somebody interested in saving money on their energy bills, that you'll have some resources available or you can always connect them with me and I'd be happy to work with them. So uh, thanks for listening to me and uh, have a good day.